everyone, Bronx Bell here. I'm Jeremy. And today we are going to be discussing post-Renaissance Disney films. <music> Through the second great wave, second Renaissance. What are you, are Because there's things? two Disney Renaissances. Yours is the... Second Renaissance. Yes, the second Renaissance. And someone who was... Born and grew up during the... Second post-Renaissance. Post-Renaissance. Like, well, second Dark Age, but like... I call it the Dark Age. So we're just going to go through the Dark Age of films, or post-Renaissance, and give each other's perspective as to whether these movies are that bad or why some of them may or may not be aging well. So, number one, I would definitely say... I, I have to talk about Fantasia 2000. It's, it's hurting my soul. Like, it was the first one to come out, too. See, and that, post the first Fantasia film came out, like, before we were even born. And, and yeah. so I, I'm fascinated to know as to why it hurts your soul. Well, because, uh, A, I've seen the first Fantasia film. Excellent. Which, yes, it's amazing. Um, and Fantasia 2000 was just weird it felt like an odd cop-out of just a bunch of celebrities coming together then them doing odd musical scores over things that just didn't like they weren't artsy not like the original fantasia was and then on top of that it was just i don't know like nothing was captivating at all well so the original had like it sort of treated it as a night in, at the orchestra, a night at the symphony. It was very formal, it was very classy. And Fantasia 2000 had Penn and Teller. Yeah, they did. It's awkward. Yeah, it was really bad. It was a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, God, Fantasia 2000. I don't think you're over it. No, no, I'm not. But, <sighs> okay, Atlantis. Second, yeah, Atlantis. Okay. Coming from someone who grew up with only hand-drawn animation, Atlantis hurts me because the animation is so beautiful and it does not deserve the awful script it got. That animation deserved way more. Um, I shouldn't have felt so damn indifferent for that ending the way I did. Yeah, and there were actually a lot of weird plot holes on it. Like, very subtle ones that I didn't get as a kid. But then I rewatched it because I was like, oh, I remember I really liked this movie. And then I rewatched it. I was like, well, I guess now I hate this movie. Well, because <laughs> the storyline was so weak that it made you pay attention to the flaws. Well, yeah, it's only that. It's, there's, okay, there's this scene where, like, when they're trying to reach Atlantis, their entire ship blows up. Now, you know, for granted, you just kind of think they take a skateboard and everything like that. They get it down to the surface. Why is all of their equipment on the surface? If the entire thing blew up. Yeah. There was a drill the size of a truck. Just perfectly fine sitting there. But everything blew up. Well, I also think the motivation, the core motivation of the film is Bosch. I never truly understood the point of finding Atlantis. And why they wanted to find it so badly. Well, for... I, I remember that the there was two points. There was one from the main character, Milo's perspective. Really? Really? Yeah. Out of, out of all people? Yep. And, it, and it just went off twice. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you were saying... Oh, yes. So, from the main character, Milo's perspective, for him, it was just the adventure part of it. He was a... I believe he was an archaeologist. And he was just, he was like, oh, like, new civilization to study, all that. It was pretty basic, but believable. Um, whereas the crew he was with, the crew he was given, uh, believe, wanted to use the technology that was, like, rumored. Well, I didn't, and, and the, so about the crew, like, I didn't hate the characters. I felt there were too many, and I most of them Mole. served. See, Mole didn't bother me as much. Mole was awful. Oh. <laughs> but it just felt that because there were so many, it felt over padded with this comic relief. And it, a lot of it fell flat. Yeah, and a lot of it was very one, like, one tone. Like, one turn, one tone, the right word. 
Oh. The entire movie literally they were all felt very indifferent. Planned. It felt like the director didn't care. They, I think they felt yeah. like it looks pretty, therefore we shouldn't care about story. Yeah, when it came to the cast, it was really weird because with the entire crew, they only had one personality trait, and then that was it. But Selma Hayek, though. Still one personality trait, and that was it. Like the, She's big. I mean, yeah, but... It, it, no, like, like, you don't, she's literally just the girl that wants to be the tough one in the situation, and then that's all she got. Okay, so I mean, I think we said pretty much everything we have to say about Atlantis. Is it worth checking out or not? I'm going to say if you want to just appreciate animation, hand-drawn animation and what it can do, and maybe put it on mute, check it out. If you want to just put on a movie and enjoy it, skip it. Don't bother. It's going to annoy you. Yeah, it, it, it will. Next. It will. Definitely will. Um, hmm. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to go to this wonderful gem here. That is a beautiful, beautiful movie. It's called Home on the Range. It, it is a wonderful film. That, I mean... <laughs> Disney should legitimately be embarrassed for even putting their logo in the front. Like, that castle with the background and the beautiful shooting star, like, that does not deserve to be at the beginning of Home on the Range. I, there's just no... The, <laughs> like, honestly, there's no discussion. Nothing, the movie's just awful. Like It's literally... It reminded me of, like, the Disney sequels <laughs> in the sense that the point of this movie is just to keep... The kid's quiet, have him shut up for an hour and a half, no substance, no value. The animation is not even anything to write home about. Hmm. And that's it. Like, there's nothing to say. Like, there's no reason for anyone to see this movie unless they're two. I was four. <laughs> Next. She was 14. It was a good day for me. Next. <laughs> Hmm. You pick one. Okay. Um. Let's talk about Chicken Little. Okay. Listen. Like <laughs> Chicken Little. I don't know how to feel about Chicken Little. Oh, I do. It's. It's cute. And I, I don't even see the charm. I, I don't find it cute. It's so. It's just playful. But not in the right way. But they're all <laughs> stupid. They're either really stupid or really awful. I can't even say people. They're, they're animals. They're just... I don't <laughs> care. I, I just think the whole thing is mean and, and it's... Well, that is kind of the point. Right, but there's no legitimate payoff in the end. Like, let, let's go back to, you know... I'm going to compare it to like a Renaissance film Go ahead. where uh, Sam Beauty and the Beast where, yeah, the Beast is legitimately a jerk, but slowly he grows on you. And as he transitions, you're rooting for him. I could really care less about the father turning a new leaf because he was just that deplorable. There was no charm to him. Yeah, no, no. The father was just a straight. Like, he, he was awful. He was awful. Right. Like, it just... And I don't remember laughing. I don't remember enjoying looking at it. A lot of the comedy, like, was supposed to come from, like, the supporting, like, cast. Whereas, like, the two friends, it was, like... I don't remember a single one. Cute. Was she a duckling? She was a duckling. Or the ugly duckling? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> why, why did this have to exist? Like, there was no reason for it. There was no storyline to it really there was a story line. well the sky was falling yes and it was an alien invasion which still made no sense because they cloaked the entire sky with their ship what well, oh yes yeah no 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 and then i was they, hoping that the aliens would abduct chicken little they did right but keep him there <laughs> because he like i didn't want him around <laughs> those other characters <laughs> and at least space like it would look pretty i'd want to look at it yeah it wasn't. Chicken Little is a film where you can enjoy it if you're just no. watching a movie to watch a movie. I mean, but if you want a parent to child film done, just watch Finding Nemo. 
<laughs> like, save yourself. You can't forget the point. I'm not comparing it. I'm just saying it's not worth checking out. There's, I mean, unless there's something I'm missing that you're not. Is it worth checking out? I'd say it's at least watching once. There's hit, like the comedy with it, like in it's very hit or miss. Like you're either real, you're either gonna like it or you're gonna absolutely hate it. Like there's no in between. Okay, so the comedy, the comedy was like references to how they're animals, but they act like humans. Well, no, it, well, not only that, but the interactions between the friends was really, well, actually, pre, uh, excuse me, pretty genuine. Like it wasn't forced to a sense where. Like, they had, like, their own, like, where they were, like, so separated from the rest of <clears throat> society, but the fact that they were just separated from the rest of society just by how they were, and they didn't need to bring up any inside jokes, their whole interaction with themselves was the inside joke to them. But that's not enough to save the movie. I'm not saying it's enough to save the movie, I'm just saying it's very genuine interaction. I guess I just, I come from a place of... You know, whether you may have agreed with the moral, at least in the films that I grew up with, the moral was, it was a clear message. There was cohesive storytelling. And you, no matter what, you could take something away. And I think why I take so much offense to Chicken Little is because there's no substance to it. It's just simply mean. It was almost Disney's attempt to try to be that cool kid in the playground, and it backfired horrifically. Because <laughs> Disney is not the cool kid in the playground. Yeah, Disney was everything. Well, I mean, yes. I'm not going to say never. Well, what I'm saying is that they're not tough guys. Like, they don't yeah. do tough well. They, they don't. Recently, they were. Yeah, I'm talking about this. Yeah, but they're not. Well, also not true. Okay. Going to Treasure Planet. I don't care what you say. That movie is a gem. That movie is a gem upon the planet that is Treasure Planet. It just looks so weird. It does look weird. It's its own different, like, it's its own just stuff, but that's its thing. Like, it's not trying to be what the Renaissance period was, but at the same time, the story is one of the best, in my opinion. It's simple, because it's basically just a retelling of Treasure Island. I mean, yeah. But... The vibe I get, and I think it's sort of what went wrong with Hunchback of Notre Dame, was the director and the storyboard and the animators had their own vision of how they wanted to tell the story. But then corporate sent them a bunch of stuff, like sent them a bunch of things of this is too dark, this is too light. No, we have to do this because it worked in other Disney films. And so that I think that's why I had tonal problems. I, mean, I don't really think it had tonal problems. Because if you look at so if you look at Treasure Planet, and I'm just going by the trailer. That's how disinterested I was. Actually, I haven't seen Tre Treasure Planet. It just it doesn't look like a smooth transition. Uh, not even transition. It just doesn't gel well. It doesn't look like it flows well. I mean, it okay the whole ships in the sky but people are dressed like back in the day but it's supposed to be a little futuristic but it's not it's kind of weird it just didn't it didn't hold my attention and call me to say hey watch this it kind of looked like a hot mess well and maybe it is because even though hunchback is a hot mess it's an enjoyable hot mess. Maybe this is an enjoyable hot mess. Well, it's not, it's not even a mess. See, you you have to. Looks like you need mess. to watch it because the fact of the matter. I is... I was a victim to Home on the Range. <laughs> I still have no regrets. Anyways, um, the way the story is set out is actually one of the smoothest, and it doesn't leave you bored. There's always something happening. To where it's pivotal to the plot. Because the way the movie like circles around the main character. And then his interaction with the supporting crew members. On top of who's supposed to be the main antagonist. First of all. Main antagonist and main character's relationship. Absolutely flawless. In okay. every single We're going to stick a pin in Treasure Planet. And I'll make a deal with you on film. I will watch it. Yeah. And if I enjoy it, I will eat my words.
She will. Home on the range. Treasure plant.